Everybody, welcome back to Ad Quarter. Today we have beginners contest 188, and um, yeah, last time we solved first five questions at the beginner contest. Today we are obviously aiming for to solve all all of them. Uh, I guess it's all that you need to know before the contest. Let me also. Yeah, so you'll see the problems I made font size a bit bigger for the problem statements, but unfortunately it will stay the same for code itself because uh, otherwise it just won't fit. And uh, I added one simple function to my template to print arrays. So nothing very interesting here. Let's open all the problems. I'm not sure. Oh, okay, there's tasks for printing. And it contains everything. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That's the correct way to read tasks, all of them at once. I have a basketball game, it's played. The score is now X, Y, okay. Uh, okay, so one team is currently winning. Okay, I guess we just read input and we print. I was supposed to print yes or no. Okay. So if current maximum of x and y is smaller than current minimum of x and y plus 3, then we output yes. Otherwise, we output no, I believe. So yeah, one team is currently losing. It's team with minimum, right? Uh, and one team is currently winning is a team with maximum. And we just want to check like when minimum gets plus three points. Will they get... Uh, yeah, I did not prepare properly, as you can see, um, but whatever. Okay, we have three and five, that's yes. We have 16 and two, it should be known, we have 12, 15, it should be now as well. I, okay, here's the submit. Oops. Should be fine, I mean. It does not look like it can be wrong, okay, yeah. Problem B, orthogonality, we have two n-dimensional vectors. We want to check whether their inner product is zero. What's, uh, whatever, I mean, we just want to read to race, read to race. Check that there, you know, I mean, it doesn't even overflow. What's the deal? I, I don't understand. But... It won't even overflow because products, oh, it can actually. Products are up to 10 to the fourth, and we, or it won't, right? 10 to the fourth. Okay, I, I don't want to think about it. Let's just uh, write a simple loop that will it will compute the inner product. 
We are again interested in output in years, but in this case, like inner product is non zero, so we output null in this branch and a yes in this branch. Okay. Okay. Here we get no, okay. Again. I mean, it can't go wrong and unless we overflow, but we don't overflow because we use in long integers. Okay. Problem C, ABC tournament. ABC is the ad coder beginner contest of some sort of a pun here. We have two to the power of N players. They built, okay, one uh, single elimination program return. Okay. Rating of player I is AI and two players different ratings. Players from, uh, uh, that's not true in life, but uh, it's a reasonable model. Okay. Perfect binary tree. Okay. Okay, so basically, we, we like uh, their indices stay the same. So, who is going to be a finalist? You guessed it correctly, it's the max of the first half and the max of the second half, and we just want to output minimum one two, right? Um, or actually, like M is not yes. You see, uh, like n is the power, and we want to read two, two to the power of n elements. So I can compute it like this. Uh, hmm. Max element, I believe from a begin all the way up to next of a begin with m. And then second finalist will be max from, yeah, we can actually compute it only once. Necessary, but why not? I mean, uh, what if uh, the expression was more complicated than we definitely want to put it as separate thing? Um, I believe we're interested in like second place. Second place is a minimum of two finalists, right? Let's check. Um, I agree, I agree. Oh no, okay. Four, four. Oh, we want the, the label, okay. We want the label, therefore we will compute it as such. Okay. 
compute uh, the labels of first and second finalists, then we do like this. If A at first finalist is smaller than A at second finalist, we can output first finalist. Uh, otherwise, we can output second finalist. Okay. I forgot. The label is not correct. Actually, labels are plus one. Okay, what are labels are one based? Okay, we finally got this sample correct. Here we get one, which is correct. Like, oh. Forgot about that. So. It sounds very reasonable. We have two finalists, and the second place is one of them who loses, and the uh, winner of the half is whoever is max. No, no. No, I did not select the correct task. Will I be penalized for that or not? I think I should not because contest is full feedback. Right. Okay, so for problem C, it's accepted, but do I get penalty for that? I forgot to select the correct problem. Apparently I don't, which is great. <clears throat> okay, problem D is snook prime. I'm not sure if it's pronounced snook or not, but it's okay. So uh, various kind of services, payment plan, okay. The pen C yen, I know it's Japanese currency per day. You can use all the service of that additional fees. You can start subscription to any plan, you can see at the end of the day, okay. <clears throat> okay. So we are kind of interested in uh, computing overlaps of segments, like whenever current payment exceeds uh, general subscription count and you want to switch to general subscription. Right. <laughs> Actually no. I want I want segments. No. I'm not sure. No, okay. Okay, yeah, I was just thinking like what is uh, the best input format, the best format in which you want to store input. And I think this is the one. Not sure where tuple is defined, so let's put it as well. First, we read actual nodes. So event will have like two, three params. First, it's time. Second is an uh, index. Actually, what is the third one? 
Third one is Boolean, whether it's often, whether it's begin or not. And we would like to have twice as many events as possible. We first read this event, read this event. Here, index gets i. Type gets true. Here, index gets i as well. But star gets false. Okay. Uh, also, we want to read the cost. Also, here we have a uh, general subscription cost. Now we can sort events. Mm. Like to define right to less for that purpose can be in line. Uh, what it will return, it will return the current time and start. Uh, yes, uh, this I included. So, first, we want to start. If two events are on the same day, then we want to first process the one that starts and then the one that closes. Actually, or actually, well, it does not matter like certain, okay, okay. No, no, I want like here the first day, yeah. We have like a start and then I want to end to not to be closing. Um, so then events that end will get zero here and they will be before. Okay. Um, that's correct. So now we can sort our event. So the first day is uh, like first day that can happen is first. So we can initialize with zero first day. Overall cost is initially zero as well. Uh, hmm. I think this is it. Okay. Oh, we also want like uh, daily cost. Also, zero. When we iterate through events, it's ABI, what's up? It's not ABI, but okay. So what is the first thing that happens? Like cost gets um, incremented by daily cost times event day. That's a time minus current day. Okay. So that this number of days passes without anything happening. And because we use non enclosure, that's exactly what happens. Now, event happens, right? So, event updates current day to event time. First thing that happens daily cost. Actually, here we want minimum of C, capital C, and daily cost. Uh, daily cost and gets. 
like that. And if you want to start of some service, then daily costs gets incremented by C at event index. Otherwise, I believe it gets decremented by the same quantity. And um, we want like to maintain true cost of all, all our services, but we add like what whatever is uh, better for us here. So, and also when we have like, several events in one day, uh, like this quantity will be zero, so we need to process them as as we should. Um, let's see if I'm correct. Mm. Line thirty-three, something went wrong. Yeah, I guess. Yes. Okay. Uh, as to the mean not found because C is not in 64. Okay. okay. Uh, and this is not correct. What, I, what actually he wants to do? <clears throat> he has cost of four. <clears throat> yeah, he should use like on first day he only uses this service, on the second day he uses this. So something went wrong, but it's okay. Little bit for debug. So we're interested in time, we're interested in index. We are interested in, I don't know. We can also add put cost at event, event index and what else reasonable we can add for. It's like current day. We can output and also daily cost. Yeah, now we should be good. Something ran wrong, apparently. So a couple of variables are not good. Why is that? Or actually, like what, what I was thinking, I should increment time, right? No, that's not correct. Now this is correct. I think so. Although 42 seems suspicious number for me. Daily cost should not be like 42. Or potentially, yes, I now understand. I copy pasted it when it was in the process. And I did it again twice.
Okay, now it sounds, sounds more reasonable. This number seems correct to me. And I did it again, sorry. Copy paste only once and we get, get what we wanted. I think we are fine, we can submit this. Select correct problem. Yeah, so like uh, all these problems with intervals, you just uh, create two events for the beginning of the interval for the end. What do you mean it's compile error? Do you want me to have like this or what? I mean, yes, it should be const, but it should not matter. I mean, it compiles. Yeah, well, I mean, this event also should be constant, I think so. Okay, yeah, maybe that was an issue. Problem E Pendler in, ta in Takahashi, I believe. Kingdom, there are n tons, call ton one through ton n, very reasonable. Uh, very convenient naming system, you know. Uh, also, M routes, so we have a graph obviously by traverse and routes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, so routes are one directional, okay. Uh, and also all roads lead to the further vertices. So we have a sort of topological sort, right, straight away. Gold is actually tried in this kingdom. Okay. Turn I, we can buy ourselves one kilogram of gold for A, I, E, N. Okay, I mean, uh, if the structure was linear, then we obviously want to compute like what is the maximum uh, price on the suffix that he can buy it. Or actually, what is the minimum price on the prefix that he can buy it? Uh, and it would be our answer. But here, like uh, nothing is different except for that so we are like minimum not not go, does not go to all the following but only to what the ones it's connected to so we take current price we push it through the edges and we output max difference uh, i believe we have like this the array of M, okay. And I also have a couple of edges. Let me go straight away with graph. And I create several edges. Right. Both well, edges are one labeled, so we have to decrement them. And uh, graph at x i, push back y i. Now we have uh, vector int um, mean faster price of size n. It should be initialized with something huge, so numeric limits uh, and max I believe will do uh, hmm. For now we just traverse vertices and I would also like to have 
on best price difference. Does he have to? Yes, he have. He has. He have. He has to buy something. To, like best button initial difference is uh, minus infinity. So now we do what? We say like uh, meaning ancestor price at i gets mean mean ancestor price at i and also price at i and best price difference gets max of best price difference a i minus i mean ancestor price Want for auto j in a graph of i want to say hey like i'm an ancestor of j so you should get my ancestor price count as well now we can output best price difference Then compiled. Says three, it's correct. Says ten, it's also correct. Let's check negative values. This zero, which is not correct. The reason because you can't, you need to have it in this order. So now we got minus 99. Just want to make sure like the previous test case is still pass. Okay, apparently they do, and I think we are good with that problem. So we do a dynamic programming on the graph, we maintain best ancestor price, which is a strict ancestor. Okay, we Actually, why do I close? Like, I won't submit to be open all the time. What's up? Uh, so far, so good. I believe we are kind of slow in the you compared to serious people, but it's okay. Problem F plus one minus one X two. Okay. We have an integer on the blackboard. We can do the following three kinds of operation increase. Oh, okay, so increase by one, decrease by one, multiply by two. I believe it would be better if they put spaces because I saw that this is one kind of operation. Uh, okay. Minimum number of operation required to have Y written on the blackboard. Okay. Which actually, like we have some difference initially. If it's divisible by two, yeah, I think it's no brainer. Uh, we have in 64 TXY in 64 T and difference gets apps x minus y. STD apps because apps sometimes glitches. Now let's put it this way. Um, so uh, idea is the following like uh, while we have some difference, if a difference is odd, right? 
uh, then I believe we have to do one operation. Else, no, action. Yes, we have to do one operation. We always have to do one operation. Or no, no. We don't deal with difference. Yes, uh, it's correct. I, I was wrong. It's not what we want. Like I saw that we are interested only in difference and we can like uh, add one, right? And then kind of if difference is divisible by two, then we can multiply by two, but it's not correct. What I guess will be correct is the following. Number of multiplications can be huge. Does not make sense to like multiply by two too many times, right? Even if you decrease. Yeah, you see, like if we multiply by two, then uh, after this operation and before next multiplication by two, it only makes sense to subtract one once. So after, so we have operations as follows. So in the beginning, we have like minus K or plus minus K, then we have X two. have plus minus one and we have x2 and etc and then uh, it, it just continues as such because if you have like plus minus two here you could transfer it here right so once you decide what is uh, like um, initial place initial change, then you have pretty straightforward thing going on. Yeah, let me send like what if if we originally have the y right then in one operation yeah we're trying to solve problem backwards if y is even if y is odd right then uh, in one operation, we can get y minus one, y plus one. Else, we still can have these guys in one operation. We also can have y or two in, y of, in one operation. This is interesting. I believe that, okay. So first of all, if X is currently greater than Y, then it does not make sense to add one or multiply by two. We are interested in subtracting. So here we have really x equals to y also. So here we are guaranteed that x is smaller than y. That was in y operation, right? 
in two operations. Again, we agree that it makes no sense to subtract or add two after we multiply it by one. Yeah, let me start answer as such. So answer is like optimal. Our best attempt so far. Initially, we can always go with all plus ones. So otherwise, there is at least one x2 operation, right? And we know that after this, we will always do like divide by two operation. Because of that, we don't uh, we don't multiply actually. Yeah, you see, like we don't use this operation plus or minus one when y is even because then to make it even again, we'll have to use it again. And we agree that we don't use this operation twice. So this is like very reasonable. All our reasonable operations are uh, as such. Actually, I believe that it will be beneficial for us to have a recursive function solving this problem. Yeah, I did not, okay. If we ever run out into something like this, Now here, if y is odd, then we want to do this operation. One of these. Else, we want to return one operation for division plus solve of x and y over 2. So this was this operation. Actually, no, here we want answer equals. Yeah, we want to return minimum of all of these things. Answer, and then and here go sums. You see, we have a slight issue here. Like, we don't know which one of these will be better. Okay. We have one opportunity that goes as such. I believe we can do just uh, this. For example, if y is three, then uh, it gets to one, and that's exactly what we want. Now here, if uh, i is smaller than I'm not sure which one of them is better. Like obviously we don't want to go into both of them because it will be TLE, right? And we can only make one recursive call here. I would like to say that if like high is uh, smaller than X then we definitely want to go to high and that's correct. But uh, if high is 
bigger than x. And here we have high is bigger than x, so low is bigger than equal to x. I'm not sure which one of them is better. Like what if, what if it's, uh, beneficial to go to high when for this case low is uh, obviously preferable but for this manipulation I don't know maybe high is better one of them is odd again remember uh, the other of them is even well actually that's an idea Or is it not? You see one of low and high is even and the other is odd because they are consecutive integers. And a, uh, if the number is even, then it results only in one recursive call. So on average, we are getting like uh, one point half recursive calls. I don't think it's like reasonable still. Let me check. Uh, 18. Yeah, it still does not sound reasonable, even if we have like on average, even if on average we have one point half recursive calls. However, like whom are we going to call if we have like this? Here we have low and low plus one. Yes, if this actually here we need two operations, right? One to add one the other to do it. Uh, hmm. Yeah, what if we have 2k and 2k plus 1? Right? 2k is going to call for k. 2k plus 1 is going to call k, k plus 1, right? What if we have 2k minus 1 and 2k? 2k will call, yeah, we always have like only two. Okay. So uh, we can write like that. Actually, we can, we can always write like that. Here we want to take whoever is best. You see, because we have uh, not too many, like we always have two consecutive values that go down. If answers count y, then answers y. Actually, it will be doing different. So. If answer is not yet is yet an, is still unknown, then we would like to compute it. Otherwise, we just return it from answers. Answers is an ordered map, and if x stays the same throughout the problem, so we don't care about it. Okay.
What is our sample? That was three, nine. Okay. So far, so good. Seven, eleven, still three. Okay. Yeah, but let's uh, let's try something else. Let's try one. Oh, I want exact number. Can I get exact number, please? Okay, whatever. Okay, so apparently it makes sense if you just divide by two. But what about uh, like this? Yeah, one more operation, that's correct. Here we should get 12. Yeah, I think this is correct. The point is uh, for we always like this three things only result in two different numbers. No, how bad is that? Okay, so it's not critically bad. Oh, okay, whatever. I can't divide. Yes, like this two obviously needed to be in 6040. Completely unnecessary. Run cancel. Okay. And it works in logarithmic time because we um, like always make two recursive calls per layer, and layer decreases numbers uh, by factor of two. Okay, so, well, where is all? No. Actually, 50 minutes, right? Uh, I don't know if it's slow, it's not. Let me open all the problems back. I, I hope we are like in top 500. These beginners contests are tricky. I sometimes overcomplicate solutions. We are 80 third, but we have a terrible penalty. So five more minutes, people can uh, overcome us, pass in standards, right? We have Ashish, I've seen his post in Code Forces, and it was like, ask me anything. Interesting. Uh, who else I have among familiar faces? To be honest, I, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I don't know very many people from Japan. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure I'm familiar with any one of these guys. A dreamer, of course, a legend. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but he sounds like super faster than we did. He, he just had uh, plus fifteen minutes of penalty. Uh, not sure that I know anyone else. Still a lot of uh, not familiar faces for me. I believe we are going to go down because of that penalty. Like we have at least two more minutes in which people can pass us. Unless they have a penalty as well which is pretty possible. Yeah, but we all already went down a little bit. I, I hope we'll stay inside top 100. Oh, that guy is a grand master in code forces. I believe. Yes, red. Come on, Come on red. Okay. Yeah, you say these beginner contests are tricky. Sometimes you just, if you have too, too, too much experience in competitive program, <laughs> although I would not say anything like that about myself. But uh, yeah, if you have enough experience and you sometimes overcomplicate solutions and you're like, whoa, I, I can't overkill this problem. But it's not expected solution and a lot of people get quicker uh, because they don't overcomplicate solutions. We don't have 
Anand. I'm surprised. I'm not sure how is uh, his surname pronounced. Is it Oza or is it Oza? It sounds appealing to me to say Oza because then it kind of rhymes, right? Anand Oza. But I, uh, I may be terribly wrong, so <laughs> please forgive me, Anand, if you. If, if I mean, I never expect people to get my surname right, okay? So it's, uh, it's fair. If you can say Nikita correctly, it's already an achievement. And because a lot of people get it like Nikita, which is whatever, I, I don't care anymore. And we don't have many familiar places, people, faces. Also, people who start with F, really cool. No, honestly, I don't understand. Where is that? Can we like somehow? On CodeForce, it's very useful that you can like uh, see your friends. And I believe I added a lot to my friends, but I still can't see him. Okay, so by this moment, I believe our penalty has ended. So we should not be getting any lower in the standards. 88, it's uh, fair enough. Absolute legend, <laughs> you see. Solving problems in reverse order is cool. I usually don't trust myself enough to solve problems in reverse order. I sometimes skip when it's in the middle, like second and third, B and C or C and D. Yes, I can swap them. If I feel like, well, if for example, C is an interactive problem and that's not really good in interactive problems, or it's just if, if it's some sort of graph when I just need yet ET or any other advanced techniques, then I also can swap because I feel like I will just code next problem faster. But here it doesn't really make sense because you don't have time penalties as on code forces. And I'm, by time penalties, I mean like um, problem score does not uh, decay over time. So I'm not sure that it makes sense to do something like this. Still, okay, so this is tricky. I mean, I believe realizing that you always make uh, these consecutive calls, two of them is key. Otherwise you may just think like, oh no, it's not going to work because it's uh, even if you make one point half calls on average, it's still too much. Okay. We can like lock off uh, in 64t max is 60, and if you take 1.5 to the 60 to the power of 60, then you get like uh, four seconds, right? No, 40 seconds actually, so it won't work. But if you realize that you do not, do not make too many calls, then yeah, straightforward. I still don't see. I thought he said that, he, oh, I'm going to participate. Is he having, I mean, if he, he has like a penalty for one of the first five problems and has not solved six yet, then it makes perfect sense that he is somewhere low in the standard, but I don't believe that he is that low, okay? Actually, yeah, what is it? Yeah, probably he is just not writing the contest at the moment. Because it's impossible that he has haven't solved like D. Right? Sorting events is just very straightforward technique. Yeah, probably he is just not uh, not computing today. And I thought he will be. I, I don't understand. Actually, where are my friends in code forces? Mm. 
No, it was not in block, but where it was? Was it in Discord? I don't know where it was. Let, let me figure this out. Maybe it was on his Discord. Okay, uh, as I'm trying to find an stream, which is of course hasn't started yet, but I just want to see if he's competing or not. Let's uh, go through problems again and explain over some clue. So first problem, we have a basketball game with two teams. They have some current score. One team is currently winning because it's guaranteed that X is not equal to Y, right? Uh, well, we, we think what happens if the team behind scores a three-pointer? Uh, well, their score, what is the team behind? The team behind currently is minimum of the two. The team ahead is currently is maximum. Uh, when team behind scores three pointer, their score gets minimum plus three. And we just check whether or not minimum plus three is greater than maximum. If it's if it is, the after scoring is three pointer, second uh, the team that is currently behind will be, get ahead. So yeah, we don't even need our template. I believe we have, yeah, we used read array several times that we haven't used pre-tree, but it's okay. Like the point of template is not to use it every time, but to use it when it makes sense. Uh, problem B, I also miss like, uh, there should be a copy button, I think. I understand that it's for printing, okay? But like, uh, here it's currently not very convenient to copy and paste test cases. And uh, when you have a view of a separate problem, that's not convenient to go between the different problems, right? You would like to, you would like to uh, be able both to, Yeah, yeah, he made an announcement. I didn't read it. He decided to skip this contest, which is very sad. Okay, whatever. Oh, and speaking about Discord, I heard like several people wanted to chat with me on Discord, obviously. Uh, like this week was a little bit busy for me. It's our sixth contest contest on stream this week, right? We had three code forces contest, one binary search and uh, two ad coder contests. Now also all of this time I, I was solving code shuffling challenge in the background. Uh, I don't think I'm currently in a good position there, but uh, let's see. We'll see you tomorrow after the contest ends, all right? So I was a bit busy to create this card server. Uh, however, uh, uh, I'll try to do my best during the following week to set up everything that I would like to. And we'll have a discard server. In case you ever want, you ever have questions for me, I'll, I'll be there sometimes. Like uh, at least a couple of times a day, I'll be around answering your questions. So. Maybe solving interesting problems with you. If you have like interesting problems that you would like me to solve, obviously you will be able to send it there. So yeah, well, it will be great. It will be great for people. Like I, I will definitely make uh, several announcements. Uh, I think on BinarySearch.com and CodeForces on YouTube. When I open my, my Discord server, you you are welcome. I, I hope we'll great we'll have a great time together solving problems, learning new things. Yeah, but um, let's get back to our business, shall we? Problem B is orthogonality. 
here we have n dimensional vectors and it might may scare you a little bit because like n dimensional vectors what's going on it's very scary right but it's not like we want to determine whether this product is zero and we can compute it in linear time so why not right like uh there are different ways to compute scalar products, but this is by far the best if you want like on the one scalar product. We just compute it. And I also called it inner product. Yeah, it's inner product. Yeah, in different traditions, in Western tradition, I believe it's inner product. In Eastern, it's sometimes called scalar product because the output of product between two vectors is scalar, right? Like A, B. Yeah, actually we, we write like this. Uh, we say that scalar product, two things which is denoted by this fancy face, uh, is a function. So it takes two inputs of dimensionality N So two real vectors, dimensionality n, and maps to a scalar value. So one real value, right? That's why we call this product scalar product. Also, we also have vector product, which is uh, in Western tradition called uh, cross product. And it's computed a bit differently only in 3D space, I believe, but it's uh, whatever. Yeah, so here we just wanted to compute this and uh, I think it will be okay if you use integers here because like, what is here? We at most have once 100 by 100, which is 10 to the fourth, right? Uh, excuse me. And here we have 10 to the fifth. And uh, when we add 10 to the fifth numbers, which are around 10 to the fourth, we, we will get 10 to the ninth, which will fit in standard integer types. But whatever, like, uh, I didn't want to think about it during the contest, so I just used like integer to avoid any sort of problems. Also, a convenient usage of our array. Like, uh, this function is actually designed in mind. Uh, it sometimes can read size for you if you don't need it, but in all of these problems, we needed size in one of the ways in one way or another. So we read, read size separately and then we can call it. By default, it reads from standard input, but you can also pass uh, any different thing. For example, if you want to read from files, you can of course uh, free open, but you can also just create a file stream and pass it to this function and it will work. So uh, you never can have too many template parameters, okay? Because most of the time, most of them are fixed. It's the same like uh, STD set, I believe. As any STD container supports custom allocator and custom allocators are really great. Sometimes uh, they can speed your program just a lot when you are allocating many nodes and you are not concerned with deleting them yourself, you can just uh, get like very huge array of char and you allocate memory like there in linearly. So you, you don't care about like, if you know that your vectors will not reach size, you reserve size of everything in advance and then you can get a significant speed up. I believe at some point in the future, we'll have a video like on several tip tricks and traps. <laughs> These are tricks because they sometimes help and traps because they sometimes, sometimes you shoot yourself in the leg. Now let's put it this way. Uh, like some optimizations that different competitive programmers use, for example, uh, yesterday I was talking about GNU policy-based data structure tree 
and I believe I I first encountered it like several years ago, but uh, yeah, a couple of days ago I was reading a Tantra group submission, uh, and I rediscovered this for myself, and I decided, that, yeah, this this is cool. I should learn, and we have many more such tricks. I believe I know around four such tricks, including pragmas, custom allocators, GNU tree, uh, an ordered map can sometimes be speed uh, speed sped up like significantly if you use hash function which is better than built in. Uh, yeah, and probably some more tricks that I don't remember like straight away. Yeah, so here nothing interesting happens. You just compute scalar product. Well, one possibility to trick yourself is here, like if in a product, it essentially means that it's not zero, right? So if it's not zero, then we want to output no actually instead of yes, right? Uh, but yeah, I don't think there are any more interesting places to discuss. In problem C, you have tournament, tournament goes as follows, let me, Let's actually take this example, shall we? And I will draw what's going on so that you can see. Have 6, 13, 12, 5, 3, 7, 10. I hope it fits 11, 16, 9, 8, 15, 2, 1. What happens? Like in first match, these two play and bigger advances. In this match, these two play and bigger advances. Here we get seven. Here we get eleven. Here we get sixteen. Fifteen. Two. And fourteen. In the second round, this to play and the bigger advances, it's 13. Here it's 11, here it's 16, here it's 14. Now then these two play, bigger advances, these two play, bigger advances. These two play, like 16 wins the tournament. But 13 is the second place. We are interested in finding second place. Uh, you can see like 16 is by this point, by this point before this match. If you wish, uh, like divide array by two, into two, right? Then 16 is the winner of the second half and 13 is the winner of the first half. Then bigger, so we have like a second half winner, first half winner. And a bigger of them wins the entire tournament, but we're interested in minimum of these two. And, and this is exactly what happens in our code. First finalist is max element from beginning to middle. But we, all, we are interested in labels, so we take like distance from the beginning. So. Max element returns iterator to max element, and you can compute distance between beginning and max element. Same, we compute second finalists. Uh, these are currently labels. So to decide who is bigger, we have to access elements in array A with these labels. And that's exactly what we do. Uh, we output whoever is smaller but we add plus one because like these labels are zero based and in problems they are one based you see one based like this in problem d we have we have no in problem d we have events like person wants to use several services you can use like a specific subscription for the service or like general subscription for everything. Uh, 
we like in every interval problem we have like intervals during which we what he wants to use uh, the services and every interval problem we can just convert to events our events have three per members like time is day at which event happens index is index of event uh, start is whether it's the begin of our of our usage of some service or the end we sort events in such order that they first go by time then if event is uh, we finished our subscription if we want to process it before we uh, open any new subscriptions it's convenient we have like bool here if it's finished then it's zero if it started then it's one now this operator allows us to sort here now here it just uh, interval with index i gets to two different events one is with index 2i the second is 2i plus one so this is essentially the same as 2i plus to i right and this is essentially the same as two times i plus one i i'm just more used to write this kind of thing i don't know why and just the first first thought that came to my mind you can uh, definitely use two times i two times i plus one i believe it would, would make the code clearer but uh, after we sorted events we process them in linear order we have like current day uh, overall cost and daily cost like uh, whenever we transition from current day to next day all of these days we use the same set of services so price is the same and price is minimum of a general subscription and daily cost daily cost is the cost if we like pay for each service separately uh, then we update time if uh, if the current event is the beginning of new subscription, then we have increment daily cost, otherwise we decrement. And in the very end, we output cost. It's it's uh, the same pattern for everything interval related to process, event processing. Like, in if you want to process some events, then uh, you either sort by time and process in linear order, or uh, you can use priority queue, right? Uh, with priority set to time, whatever. Here in problem E, we have dynamic programming on the graph. However, graph is already topologically sorted for us. So it's directed a cyclic graph. So it's yes, it's usually called DP on DAG or DAG. No, it actually should be DAG because direct R cycling, right? R is very clear because it means negation, it's not A cycling. Yeah, so uh, we have graph. We first create the graph, right? So read edges the command and sort only one because edges are directed you can, you can travel from x y to y i but not vice versa and we have a vector which uh, stores minimum price of ancestor of each vertex it's the same like uh, best time to buy, buy sell stock but uh, you you know you can't use every town for every following town you can use it only for only if the previous time was an ancestor of this time that's what we store here we update these prices um, with the edges of the graph here we update best price and also we have to update with current price in the vertex because this should be pushed like here Although AI is technically not an I is technically not an ancestor of I, but uh, we can do it in this fashion because we are already done with uh, mean ancestor by set of I. It's like currently is it's on the matter for the following things, and I is an ancestor of the following things. 
yeah well, at first i got this wrong because and it was wrong because uh, here ai can go to here which corresponds to no trading but in the problem we have to make some trades for example there can be example sample test cases when like in reverse order we get zero because we the optimal way to trade is not to trade at all problem f again uh, we write a recursive function if x is currently smaller than if x is currently greater than y and uh, only thing that we make sense to do is to decrease x so and it will take that many operations to decrease x every time you decrease by one to y right otherwise it is always possible to increase x y by one and if you don't increase then we make at least one uh, multiply by two operation which corresponds to divide y by two so we solve problem in reverse we try to go from y to x and then dividing by two right we can still add plus one subtract plus one and um, but now we divide by two if uh, y is even then it only makes sense to divide it because if you like add one subtract one at some point, we agreed that if we are not, if we are using only addition and subtraction, it will uh, subtraction. It will require that many operations. Here we uh, use divide by two operation at some point, right? So we will divide by two at some point. If you don't divide by two straight away, for example, if we increment by one, increment by two, then divide by uh, increment by one, increment by one, then divide by two. It's the same like dividing by two first and then incrementing by one. Okay? Uh, and this is clearly shorter. So we can make such recursive call. And it decreases y by a factor of two, and it's really important. Like if I y is however odd, then uh, Again, it makes no sense to make several addition operations. So we can have either plus one over two, divide by two, right? Or minus one and divide by two. This will lead us to the following two things, both of which we take two operations to get. And then we make two recursive calls. And you may think like, wait, make two recursive calls of size uh, twice smaller. It should be linear, right? Uh, no, because of the following. Like, uh, let's say that y equals to 2k plus 1, right? And then these two guys will be k and k plus 1, right? One of them is even. For example, let's say that y actually equals to 4k plus 1, and then these are 2k and 2k plus 1. Uh, 2k will only call k because of here. 2k plus 1 will call k and k plus 1. So actually, among these three calls, two are the same. Okay. And if you had like 4k plus 3, you may argue like, no, we'll, we'll get like something different and because uh, now what number will be small. It's still the same. So this gets uh, calls recursively k and k plus 1, and this is even, and calls only k plus 1. So these two now are the same. So whatever happens, we make two recursive calls per layer because many of them overlap. And because we use an ordered map to store answers, and if we know the answer, we make recursive calls only if we don't know the answer. If we know the answer, we return it straight away. So only two significant calls will happen on each layer. And we have logarithmic number of layers. So overall solution works in logarithmic time. Uh, this is it for today.
Un garçon. Contest is still running, but uh, yeah, I will convert the video currently. So yeah. Hmm. Hope you enjoyed. Hope uh, these are educational videos help you. And uh, see you in the next one. Bye.